Yeah, I always put cats in videos. What the hell, right? And this guy, he's probably a blue Abyssinian, not a blue Russian blue, because he's got this thing where he goes from dark, dark gray, and he fades out to white. And that's exactly how they are. And you see, I don't know if you can see on his head, he's got like these lines going like that, and two major lines. That's exactly how they are. And he's not 100%, but they got it from the owner. And uh, I think uh, they screwed up when they said Russian blue. Because, oh, the owner said Russian blue. It's sure. And <laughs> he'd be all gray if he was part Russian blue. So I think he's a blue Abyssinian. And that makes more sense because uh, they're a lot more common. And, uh, you know, they're, they're probably, who knows what the hell it is. <laughs> but somebody pointed that out to me. He's probably right. Now, to get on this subject of importance in political uh, topic here. Um, at first, uh, this thing with the march on D.C., man, I don't know. I don't know what people, other, I don't know, see. When I look at that stuff with the march on D.C. and I, and I saw Adam Kokesh, Man, that just rubbed me wrong all the way. I, I, I see BS, showboat, scam, the whole deal. That's that's how I read it instantly. That's my whole gut reaction. That's my opinion. But, man, it just, the meters went right off the freaking scale. But somehow people are thinking it's the greatest thing in the world. And I'm thinking, nope. Actually, I think uh, this guy's part of the man. You know, he's part of the deal on the top. That's what I think. It's you know I'm not going to dig into it like really far because I don't really give a shit because people are going to freaking believe what they want to believe anyway. But you know I think if there was one march that I personally like to join into besides you know not this armed march on D.C. it would be fixed bayonets on the IRS. I mean shish kebab those fuckers man. I mean really fixed bayonets on the IRS. I mean, hand to hand, the whole deal. Fuck them. <laughs> I mean, really. Um, me saying that is really sticking my neck out because those jackasses. Uh, I don't like any of this. You know, I don't like any of that shit. I, I hate that shit. That really pisses me off more than anything. But let me get back to the subject on here, on hand here, about you know the march on D.C. for our gun rights. You know, I, I put out here like yesterday. I should put it out earlier, but you know, I don't. You know, I don't really make nothing on this. You know, I don't really work this internet shit. You know what I mean? Like SGT Bulls probably got all this stuff he puts. I don't even try it. I just put my uh, my common sense things out on here. That's all it is. You know. But I put something out about you know a World War II veteran who's a Medal of Honor winner that put a flag up in his yard. And the Homeowners Association told them to put it, take it down. And it was just yesterday, right, July 4th. And, uh, you know, it's like the guy was, you know, they, the media made it look like he was just some cranky old dodger just wanted to put the flag up. But, you know, it was even more to that. They didn't want to mention he was a Medal of Honor winner in World War II and uh, did all, this, all these things to save his fellow soldiers and Americans uh, in that war. And helped greatly to uh, win that war. Uh, he didn't, you know, they didn't say nothing about that at all. But you know, when I look at Kokesh just blatantly just being able to get away with the whatever, you know, the march in D.C. and like, you know, I, I smell bullshit. I smell false opposition all the way. Like if a normal person tried that and even did attempt that, they would be nailed to the cross already. And there ain't shit you could do about it. First off. You know, the way I look at it, when you take out a gun and you load it, that means you're going to use it. You don't walk around like, oh, look, I got a gun. Oh, it's my right. You know, it's your right, it's your right. If you're taking a gun out and it's loaded and you, you, you're freaking trying to make a big show of force, that means you're going to use it. So him just getting away, just like oh everything's you know we, it was a success and you know when I looked at what he said I man I saw sh some uh, man showboating BS to the max but I also smell he's controlled opposition that's how I see it all the way and I know there's even a lot of people going and like I said you know if you want to freaking get on a march that really 
I would get into be fixed bayonets on the IRS. I mean, you know, everybody be on that anyway, but not really because they'd be chicken to it. But I, I, that I probably would get into, no problem. No problem. But uh, I smell like with uh, Kokesh, you know, it's a, it's a scam all the way. Now, I want to comment a little bit about some other things that happened way in the past, like with World War II. I know a lot of people say, like, we fought against the people that were fighting communism, which was basically we fought against the Nazis who were fighting communism. Why did, you know, you know, at the time, nobody, you know what, if you really look back, in 1940, 83% of Americans did not want to get involved in another war in Europe. You know, they didn't want to get involved in World War I, and after they got tricked into that, you know, twenty over twenty years later, they're trying to get us involved in a, in a world war again. That was back in the thirties, right? And in nineteen forty, a year before World War Two started for the USA, they had a Gallup poll and said eighty-three percent of the Americans, this is August of nineteen forty, were against getting involved in a war with in Europe. That's why they had, you know, Pearl Harbor. That's why the Japanese were tricked into, well, they're kind of tricked into it, but they would have done it anyway, so one way or the other. But that's why no early warning systems went off in Pearl Harbor. It had to be bad enough so the people of America could get behind the war. But, you know, we didn't go over to attack Japan. It's like you think, you know, who attacked us first? You know, I know Germany's allies and stuff like that and all this garbage. That was the maneuver to try to get Germany into war with Germany. But, you know, this is all the political stuff on attack. And, you know, you could say the same thing with the Germans, too. The average German soldier, you know, this is where these, you know, I know some of these people, like, they, I don't know, there's a lot of controversy over this Nazi stuff. But the average German soldier, for the most part, I'm not talking like all of them, but for the most of them, were actually really good, honorable soldiers. You know, they, everybody, like, some, some people think they were all Nazis, and then some people think all these German Nazis were good. You know, but actually, the political top, and the, the top people were screwed up, especially in the pol political area. But a lot of the military was pretty, not all of them, but a lot of them were very honorable in Germany. The thing is, people get tricked very easily. That's the problem. And, you know, I think people are getting tricked a lot easier today than they used to be. I think people a long time ago, when the Federal Reserve was passed and all this type of stuff, I mean, there was a lot more people on the ball who was going on than there is even today. And, you know, I look at a guy like this march on Washington, Adam Kokesh, man, I see that as a total scam, too. That freaking communist faults. Communist-led, uh, you know, uh, controlled opposition, man. <laughs> That's all that shit is all the way. If you want to go after the real communist, one of the major planks of Karl Marx, that's the IRS, fixed bayonets on them bastards. No problem, man. You know? Climb the entrenchments and stab them in the freaking head. <laughs> I mean, really, that would, that would be something good. Because, you know, anytime I figure you pull out a gun and you got to load it and you're like, Ugh, that means you're going to use it. You know, if it's your right to have the gun, you go kiss the freaking politician's ass and tell them, I want you to vote this way, or I'm not going to vote for you ever again. And you know, then he votes that way. Actually, you don't stick the gun in somebody's face until you're ready to use it. That's why I know that showboating shit. That's all that is. So, uh, but you know, it goes goes along with anything else that happened in the past. You know, I mean, Americans were smart back in the 40s, before, you know, early 40s, before, you know, 1940s, say before World War II actually started. And, uh, you know, that was a, in the plans, buddy, a week, a long time before that. I'm going to say something else, too. I don't. I might pull it out of here. I don't know which one. Of, it's actually one of these National Geographic's back here, one of these orange books, yellow books, that um, if you look in there, it had a, 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 a page of a later Geographic from maybe from the 70s or 80s that showed... Um, World War II in a January 1941 National Geographic and they were referring to UNO 
the UNO forces, the United Nations Organization forces against the Axis. That was like weeks, a few weeks after World War, uh, after Pearl Harbor in World War II. They had this on a drawing board in the 30s the whole time. Basically, World War II was a global war with global domination and ambitions. But you know, how do people get fooled? You know, I don't see, and that's, I, you know, when I look at Kokesh with this march on D.C., man, it's the opposite which you think you want to believe it is. It's, it's not good. It's not good. And like I said, when you actually pull out a gun and you put rounds in it and stuff like that, and you make sure they're chambered and stuff, and you're out there in the open and saying, yeah, this is my gun or whatever, you're out there to use it, man. You're out there to use it. And there's something smelling bad with this guy big time. That's all I got to say. I, I don't trust it at all. At all. Not even the slightest. But I'd say probably more than half the... Well, there's going to be a lot of people who are going to disagree with me on that. A lot. I know. But this is why the people on the top always win. I mean, it's, <laughs> most of the people are stupid. Most people are stupid. I don't know if you know why I should tell them this, Sid, because they still don't, they believe whatever they want to believe. You know, I knew about the Pearl Harbor scam in 1971. And you know what? And maybe it's more, maybe a lot of people know now that how the Japanese were coaxed into hitting Pearl Harbor. And Pearl Harbor was basically deliberately left open by FDR. And all this type of stuff, and he had Admiral Kimmel, whatever I forgot his short, short and Kimmel, when I think the two that were, uh, you know, hung hung out to dry for all the blame. Not it was a setup, but not you know that's maybe more common knowledge now. But you know what I knew about it? In 1971, 13 years before Senator Guy Gillette put out his book, None Dare Call It Infamy, I knew about that. That it was basically a conspiracy, if you want to put it that way. But you know, that's just how shrewd people are. So if you want to believe in cold cash, the guy that used to work for RT, um, go right ahead. Go right ahead, because you know, I don't know what the hell to say about that shit, because you know what? Some people are just convinced one way or the other, and that's just the way it is. But I'm just saying, when I see this, I see that crap about, you know, the march on DC was a success and showboating the gun and stuff. Nope. Ain't buying it at all. Not at all. Not even in the slightest. So, it's my opinion, man. And you know what? Most people are going to get fooled. Or enough people are going to get fooled. And that's how the guys on the top win. Really. Because people aren't thinking. 